Good day guys, so today's quick video is going to be on the General Motors Weapon X system as part of the Astron project held in the US. While it has been briefly covered here and there, we strive to give you the best quality picks and info we can, so let's take a look. The Weapon X begins back in January 1954, following the previous project done by the Detroit Arsenal, which saw vehicles such as the Yo tanks. In a memorandum by the Army Chief of Staff, General Collins, on the 10th of January 1953, he notes the design policy for research and development should form two parallel paths. Like the previous projects, these looked at firstly the improvement and evolution of existing vehicles, and the other option was the development of new solutions to design problems utilising new types of equipment. Our tank falls into the latter category. However, Collins was aware that by giving a firm a list of prerequisite requirements and specifications to adhere to, this had a negative impact on hindering creative ideas and stimming a potentially good concept. What was needed was a blank sheet for new designs with contracts to be tendered. These contracts were to be placed with a variety of firms, although only those that had, had a proven track record of research and engineering and suitable staff to handle the project with the stipulation that at least two firms selected should be major automotive players with previous experience in tank design. These designs would not be hindered by set requirements or restrictions, with the only ones stipulated that any design would need to be a viable concept that could be ready by 1958, although this was later changed to 1961. The Ordnance Technical Committee minutes note the various projects and firms come under a project name, which was given the title Astron on the 24th of April 1953. Some 17 proposals were put forward by industries at the time, which in turn were reviewed at the Detroit Arsenal and Pentagon during May and June of 1953, and of these General Motors and Chrysler were awarded contracts, although the latter would pull out and be replaced by Continental Motors in December 1953, while Detroit's own Ordnance Tank Automotive Command would be the third to join. All three firms presented their ideas to the Pentagon on the 17th and 18th of May 1955. This resulted in some quite bizarre vehicles. Continental Motors presented a large vehicle known as the Chicken Hen Weapon X, a modular hull design which could break down into multiple parts, a lighter adaptable front vehicle and a heavily armed main platform, while the Detroit mob would go on to design the Rex tanks, but we'll cover these in another video. Meanwhile, General Motors presented their idea. They believed, as was popular thinking at the time, that no amount of conventional armour was adequate on the modern battlefield versus the weapons of the day, and that by adding armour you were in fact hindering the tank's other layers of survivability, being mobility and profile. They reasoned that in this case mobility would provide the protection required. Thus they chose to limit the armour down to a bare minimum, enough to keep out small arms fire and shell splinters, and created their X-Weapon, keeping the name as it was. The X-Weapon from General Motors was less a medium tank and more a heavily armoured light tank, or indeed a tank destroyer using the World War II doctrine. Armed with a powerful 90mm T-208 smoothbore gun, asserted to the T-95 medium tank at the time, on an 85 inch diameter turret ring. The gun, which was not stabilised and fired some of the first armour-piercing, fin-stabilised discarding sabre rounds available, was able to perforate 254mm of steel at 2,000 yards. The turret was designed for high-speed electric traverse of just 8 seconds, and the gunner had a stereoscopic rangefinder. Secondary protection was provided from a pair of .50s, one coaxial and one on the cupola. The gun had minus 10 degrees of gun depression and plus 20 in elevation. Despite its small size, they were able to fit 40 rounds into the vehicle, with 8 in the hull and the rest in the turret. The vehicle's armour, however, was very thin, at just 28.5mm on the turret face, angled for 32mm effective, and 19mm angled back 67 degrees for 47mm effective on the upper hull, all built of an all-welded homogeneous steel, which gave it protection against only the lightest of incoming fire. However, this did keep the weight down to just 26 tonnes. The Weapon X was to use the Continental AOI-1195 engine, also used on the T95 medium tank, coupled with an experimental XT500GS transmission, delivering 590 gross horsepower, although sources vary. 
This gave the X-Weapon a top speed of 80 km an hour. The suspension consisted of four large road wheels on each side with no return rollers and used half width solid torsion bars surrounded by concentric torsion bars for suspension. Shock absorbers were fitted to the first and last station and the vehicle has a 22 inch wide track with a front idle and rear sprocket. Weapon X is a four man crew with the commander on the right hand side and the gunner located in front of him, each with their own vision devices. While the driver has a well laid out three sight device and good lines of sight. Overall Weapon X is very comfortable and quite well thought out little tank with excellent firepower mobility. However despite this it was quite clearly not a medium tank as the US saw it and fitted the category of a light tank. Compared to many other proposals around this time it's one of the better ones designed and had the criteria not been for a medium tank it might have gained some traction. However no further work was done and the vehicle remains a conceptual study. Well guys I hope you liked this quick video on the Weapon X. If you did give it a like and subscribe or give it a share so we can help this channel grow. And until next time Toodle pip.